my sex positive. It's close enough. Hi everyone, Lacey Green here with a very special guest, Miss Olivia. Hi. Thanks for coming on Sex Plus, Olivia. Oh my god, no problem. Olivia is one of my friends. She's going to be talking to us about sex and disability. What's your disability? Marison deficiency disability, which means that my body lacks something called Marison, which helps build muscle. I am affected in all four limbs of my body. I also have epilepsy. This has led you to some disability activism mm -hmm. at your university. I am on the R Crippled Screwed panel. It was started in 2006 on my campus. One of my friends who was on the panel, she was like, you're, you're getting laid. You need to talk to people yeah. about your sex life. <laughs> Can we talk about language for a second? Like, mm -hmm. isn't that a very offensive word? If I was an able-bodied person, I wouldn't just walk up to some person in a wheelchair and just be like, what's up, Crip? If it's someone that like, you're comfortable with, like Lacey is, has the honor of calling me a cripple. I will never call you that, Olivia. <laughs> it's supposed to be a double entendre of our crippled screwed, our crippled fucked. Why has person with disabilities become the prominent term? Well, a person with a disability, it's like referring to the person as people first. Yeah. We're a person first as uh, versus a disabled person. What are some of the main stereotypes you think are out there? People with disabilities are often uh, visualized as being pure and virginal or a villain. Does inspiration porn fall in the, <laughs> in the perfect angelic end of things? I get this a lot from old ladies that just see me walking around in the street, they're just like, <gasps> Bless your heart. <laughs> You're out of the house. You have nothing to live for. I think that people sort of see people with disabilities as sexless. They're not yeah. getting any. Are mm -hmm. you getting any? Yes. Currently, yes. <laughs> so on one end, we have people who see those with disabilities as sexless. On the other hand, have you ever heard of people sort of being fetishized? There is actually a fetish for people who have disabilities. It's called devotees. Or if you want to be more specific for people who use wheelchairs, it's called a chair chaser. Have you ever encountered someone like this? I have. I don't want to say like what they're into is totally disgusting and wrong because I can't speak for that person. But at the same time, if you remove the person from the disability and if you just love the disability, you mm -hmm. know, what is the relationship about? Right. It's, yes. it's another form of objectification. You're objectifying the person. Yeah. Are you down to talk about dating? I would love to talk about <laughs> dating. So the way that I describe it to people is like a little story. Like when you're at a college party, um, you're dancing. The good thing about being in a wheelchair, in my opinion, is if you dance with me, you pretty much have to give me a lap dance. You're all sprung up on each other and grinding on each other, and then you're just like, hey, let's go into the back and hook up. Obviously, there is a giant like metal thing that I'm sitting on. I have a giant metal ass. <laughs> hashtag metal ass, hashtag hot, <laughs> hashtag part robot. Love it. Transformer. <laughs> a great thing about disability is communication starts from day one. You always have to be having that conversation of what you're comfortable with, what you're not comfortable with, and what you're capable of doing. So you're dating someone right now? Yes. How long y'all been together? Um, on and off about three years. Wow, it's a long time. Do they ever have any anxieties? When they mention an attendant, uh, their friend will be like, wait, what, attendant? He'll tell them, oh, yeah, she uses a wheelchair, she needs people to help her. And then the friend would respond with, oh, so you just get them when they're broken. And then that really offends that person, but I'm just like, Honestly, I've been hearing stuff like that my whole life. It doesn't offend you? It doesn't offend me because the way that I see it is it's that person's loss because they're limiting their field of people and honestly, it's not that different. Yeah. Dating someone who's able-bodied, you're just being closed-minded. Yeah. And you really need to open yourself up yeah. to the world. Spinal injuries. cord injuries is a very good one to start off with. Okay. Uh, people with spinal cord injuries don't have sensation in certain parts of their body. For example, their genitalia. People with penises, they might need to use drugs such as Cialis, Levitra, and Viagra. Injuries that are like at the lower part of their spine often use injections into their penis, causes an instant boner. Insta boner! You can also use Viagra to increase lubrication. So a lot of folks on Twitter and Tumblr and mm -hmm. Facebook were asking about paraplegics. They're not eliminated from having sex. Yes. Every, anyone with a disability can have sex, right? Anyone with a disability, yes. What are some of the things that can assist them? There are wedges that can help elevate hips, 
or for your head or for your back. Sex toys such as vibrators to help people who don't have as much sensation. Cock rings are actually really good for people who have a spinal cord injury. Huh, because it can help maintain It erection. helps maintain an erection. Also, there's this wonderful thing. It's called a love wedge. It's a chair that's love like wedge. a chair that moves back and forth like this. It can help with the, the actual movement. To help with the actual movement. Cool. There are actually people that can be sexually active in their wheelchair. The, the thing about most wheelchairs is they have the ability to elevate. Ah, yeah. Oh, dang! I'm like my own little boner. <laughs> also, we have the ability to tilt back like this and also to recline. Can attendance play a role in sex? Yes, it's all about communication with your partner, what your partner is okay with and what you're okay with. Um, if needed, the attendant can be in the room. It also has to do if the attendant is okay with it to help them. What about chronic pain? Sometimes they can be into kink and BDSM, and with that, they can control their pain. Mm -hmm. Or they can also use sex as a therapy. Right. Yeah. I've heard stories of people with chronic pain where sex would make the pain go away. Well, let's talk about intellectual disabilities, which is a different kind, right? This topic is a little difficult for me to discuss because it's not your experience. It's not my experience, but it also goes along the lines of consent. Are they able to consent and are they able to understand what is and is not okay? Right. Because a part of me does not want to deny a person the ability to experience this, sure. but then the other part of me doesn't want the person to be taken advantage of. It probably depends on the person, huh? It and depends. And someone who has a real intimate understanding of their, yes. of their life and their experience yes would be the best bet. All right, that was a ton of information. I'm so educated now. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks so much, Olivia, for coming and for answering all these questions. No problem. Say thank you to Olivia in the comments because she's so wonderful. Uh, all right, thanks for watching, everyone. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Mwah. Except your mom, oh. What?